Blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. It is a beautiful Friday morning here in Dangriga, and I pray it is a beautiful Friday morning where you are as well. We're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled, um, this one is entitled, now I have forgotten the name of this one. This one is entitled, Father, we thank you for the night. That's the name. Let's have a listen. Father, we thank you for the night and for the place. enjoyed that one from Sanji, the music teacher. I did, I did, I did. We are going to get our words here up on screen for today, March the 5th, Friday, March the 5th. And here we go. There we are. <laughs> we'll begin with our opening sentence from Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations. And in every place, incense shall be offered to my name. 
and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. If you are following along in your books of common prayers, I invite you to turn with us to page 35, where we use versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind briefly those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we would have done that would have been displeasing to God, that would have been unjust to our neighbors, or that would have been unfair even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 69. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 69. Save me, O God, for the waters has risen to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed. For looking for my God. Those who hate me without cause are more than the hairs on my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O God of Israel. Surely, for your sake, have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned into my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord. 
In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrents of water wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let the table before them be a trap, and their sacred feast a snare. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see and give them continual trembling in their loins. Pour out your indignation upon them, and let the fierceness of your anger overtake them. Let their camp be desolate, and let there be none to dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom you have stricken, and add to the pain of those whom you have pierced. Lay to their charge guilt upon guilt, and let them not receive your vindication. Let them be wiped out of the book of the living, and not be written among the righteous. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen more than bullocks with horns and hoofs. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 14, a song of penitence, the Kyrie Pantocrator. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 55. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offsprings, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All that quake with fear at your presence, they tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me. 
in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. And yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Bible reading for today comes from Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 1 through to 9. Let's have a listen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through to 9. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and take note. Search its squares and see if you can find one person who acts justly and seeks truth, so that I may pardon Jerusalem. Although they say, as the Lord lives, yet they swear falsely. O oh Lord, do your eyes not look for truth? You have struck them, but they felt no anguish. You have consumed them, but they refuse to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to turn back. Then I said, These are only the poor. They have no sense, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the law of their God. Let me go to the rich and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the law of their God. But they all alike had broken the yoke. They had burst the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest shall kill them. A wolf from the desert shall destroy them. A leopard in watching against their cities. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn into pieces. Because their transgressions are many. Their apostasies are great. How can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken you and have sworn by those who are no gods. When I fed them to the full, they committed adultery and trooped to the houses of prostitutes. They were well fed, lusty stallions, each neighing for his neighbor's wife. Shall I not punish them for these things? says the Lord. And shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reflection for this morning comes from that very interesting passage from Jeremiah chapter 5 verses 1 through to 9. And if you allow me a few seconds to get it back here up on screen. And what an interesting portion of scripture indeed. Oof, I tell you, this portion of scripture is about the Lord searching for someone that is righteous in Jerusalem. And the prophet Jeremiah is looking for someone to bring before the Lord, someone who is seeking truth, someone who the Lord will see and because of them save Jerusalem. It is interesting because this portion of scripture reminded me of Noah and it reminded me of Moses's plea and it reminded me of Lot's plea. And it seems that every time the nations turned away from God, God comes with a warning for them. And after the warning, God gives them a period of time to repent and turn from their ways. And then, when they do not repent, he raises up someone to go and tell them, listen to me, I am about to destroy you, you know. You really should turn away from your sins. And this person goes to, rep to caution the people of the impediment that is, the impending judgment that is coming from God. And then, after this, it always seems to be that the prophet that God sends to tell the people he will destroy them is the one who begs on their behalf. When the Lord was going to destroy the earth in the flood, he couldn't find more than Noah, his wife, 
his three sons and their three, three wives. Eight people. And for the sake of these eight people, he did not completely destroy the earth. He saved an animal, a pair of animals of each kind, and he saved these eight to regenerate the earth. In the time of Moses, when the people are rebelling against God in the wilderness, despite all that he has done for them. And the Lord says to Moses, you see me, this ungrateful generation, I'm going to wipe them out here. And Moses begs, but these are your people. You brought them out here. How will it look if you kill them? Please don't kill them. Remember your mercy and your promise to Abraham. But for the sake of just a handful, do not utterly destroy them, my God. And Moses begs on their behalf. And when the Lord comes to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of all their sins, not just the sexual ones, because of all their sins, Lot begs, for the, for the sake of you know, this amount, will you not save it? And then he pushes his luck. For the sake of this amount, will you not save it? And he lessens the number each time, and the Lord gets down to 10. For the sake of 10, I'm not going to destroy the place. And here we find Jeremiah running to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, looking around, searching to see if there was a single person who would act with truth, who would act with justice, so that God would pardon Jerusalem. One. God sends him to look for one that would be faithful. And it seems as if though they couldn't find one. And the Lord says, you know what? They swear by my name. As the Lord lives, they say. And they are liars because they don't mean it. If you could find one man who will seek truth, I will pardon Jerusalem. And it goes to show, and God is revealing here, just how corrupt Jerusalem was in that day. If there was not even one man who did right and sought after truth. My goodness, what a state of corruption these people were in. Yeah, just look for one. And in the whole of the nations, the Lord couldn't find one. Jeremiah could find many religious people in Jerusalem who were practicing their piety, who with pomp and show was doing what they felt was supposed to be done, but not one of them could save the city from judgment because not one of them sincerely sought the Lord. They were doing what they're doing for sure to look good in the eyes of others. And this disheartened Jeremiah. And Jeremiah falls in verse 3. He falls into a prayer. Oh Lord, he begs. Yeah, These people are poor. They are stricken with grief. You have consumed them. And they refuse to take correction. Please, oh Lord. Do you know what? Are your eyes not the eyes of truth, God? And Jeremiah appeals to God, who saw and cared about the truth among men. He prayed with a sense of amazement at the hardness of heart and the stubbornness of God's people. You know? They have made their face harder than rock. They have refused to turn back. You know what? And Jeremiah mourns and grieves over the lack of repentance and the brokenness of the people over the sin among the people of Jerusalem. Yes? And he was grieving for them. They were the ones stricken, and yet they did not grieve. They were the ones being consumed by hardships, and yet they would not correct their ways. And despite all that they had endured and all that they would endure, they simply refuse to return and poor jeremiah and it raised the question in my head how do you save someone who doesn't want to save themselves how do you save someone who doesn't want to save themselves 
Jerusalem was in such a state of corruption and poor Jeremiah pleading, begging, searching for a great man in Jerusalem that would stand up for the people, cause them to turn around. And he, his appeal to God was so sincere. These are poor and foolish. They don't know the way of the Lord. Let me look for, for a righteous man for a little bit longer. And Jeremiah was amazed at the spiritual and moral foolishness of the people of Jerusalem. And he considered that maybe it's because they don't understand. Maybe because they were poor and uneducated. Let me go and look for somebody of a higher esteem that will fully grasp the magnitude of the situation that they are facing at your hands, God. Just, just give me a little bit more time. And Jeremiah begs for them. But he turns to the aristocrats of Jerusalem with all their education and advantages. And surely a righteous man would be able to be found among them. But his search for a great man in Jerusalem ended up in disappointment. Because those who were educated and supposed to know better, they too had rebelled against God. They too had broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Yes? And then God tells them in verse 6 through to 9, the penalty that would come upon this rebellious city. And I love the imagery of the forest that is used. Yes? Therefore, a lion from the forest shall kill them, and a wolf from the desert shall destroy them. A leopard is watching against their city. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn into pieces. You know? And most theologians see the lion, the wolf, and the leopard described here as pictures of coming invaders that would come to destroy Jerusalem. You know? And yet it is also possible that Jeremiah might have pictured Jerusalem and the other city of Judah, cities of Judah, desolate and given over to wild animals, empty that they would have gone into exile yet again. But what it, whether it be of the coming assault from other cities or the, the exile that Jeremiah saw, what was definitely certain of the vision was a long period of abandonment that they would go into. A long period of hardship that they would go into. You know, and they couldn't see it coming. They couldn't recognize that their sins and their ingratitude is what had caused God to, gotten to, to get to this state. Judah's sin was all the worse when considered as simply ingratitude. And the Lord says it, eh? how can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken me. You have sworn by those who are no gods. So they had turned away from God. They are making promises and they are praising idols. They have not continued to praise and worship God the way he had commanded them. They are not following the statutes he had set before them. You know, And powerful and poetic is the description of how given over the people were to pagan worship and ritual prostitution. Because that was a part of it. In the pagan worships of the time, the temples of the pagan gods had prostitutes and you would pay to sleep with the prostitutes as a part of praising the God. And it was just vile and full of, of wretchedness and insincerity. And these people that God had provided for time and time and time again gave themselves over to this loss and to these evil desires. And all the things that he had commanded them and cautioned them to be mindful of were the things that they were doing. And the Lord's word to Jeremiah, shall I not punish them for these things? Jeremiah's search was futile. He found no righteous men or men of truth. He could not find a righteous man 
that he could convince to guide the people back to God. What he found was spiritual rebels and adulterers. And this was a nation that was due for judgment. And the Lord ends the portion of the reading with the question, shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? A caution for us can be taken from this portion of scripture. A caution for us. Be mindful of your actions. For there is retribution for everything that you do. When we make a confession in the morning, we do it for thought, word, and deed. Be mindful of what you think. Be mindful of what you see. Be mindful of what you do. For you will be held accountable. Amen. We continue this morning with the profession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C, which can be found on page 44 in our Books of Common Prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our collect for this morning begins with the collect for the second Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your way and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast feet to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for our young persons. God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goods. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their word, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our final call it, a call it for Fridays. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. 
so clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mr. Ryan Daly. And celebrating a birthday today are the following individuals. Miss Linda Heitker, Miss Melanie Williams, and Father Peter Nielsen. Ladies and gentlemen, we pray that you have a blessed and beautiful birthday. And that indeed God's blessings will be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days ahead. Happy birthday! We continue to give God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to join in prayer with those who are still on the road to recovery. We remember in our prayers this morning, Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Agnes, Miss Celine, Miss Agnes V, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Marilyn. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Sonia, Miss Grace, Miss Yolanda, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet. We remember in our prayers Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Olga, and Miss Dylan. We remember and pray for Miss Mary, Miss Harris, Miss Marva, Miss Sonia, Miss Felicia, Miss Jessica, Miss Mildred, Miss Althea, and Miss Anisetta. We pray as well for the following of our brothers Mr. Lewis, Mr. Cecil, Mr. Leon, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. James, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Oscar, and Mr. Antoine. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Normando, Mr. Larry, Mr. Finley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Costa, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Ian, and Mr. Alfred. We pray for Mr. William, Mr. Glenn Ford, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Zane, Mr. Damien, Mr. Dion, Mr. Eugenio, Mr. Dudley, and Mr. James. This morning, we would like to remember and pray for the family of Mr. Gary Jeanette, who passed away yesterday. We pray for Miss Barbara and Mr. Gary's children, Gary Jr. and Lisa. We pray for comfort and peace for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. And we pray for return and rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers Ashley, Akua, Courtney, Karina, Anwa, and Tammy. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil and Jade at this time. We pray for our sick and shut in parish members, including those of the Christ the King parish family. Mr. Eds, Miss Elva, Mr. Austin, Miss Amy, Mr. Alfonso, Miss Myrtle, Miss Jean, Miss Ismay, Miss Gladys. For those who care for the infirm, praying for Miss Sonia, Miss Monica, and Miss Raquel. We remember and pray for the enablement and protection of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. Remembering Dr. Molina, Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Sosa, Dr. Show Green, Dr. Arana, Dr. Cuellar, and Dr. Joseph. For our nurses, Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Joycelyn, 
Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, and Nurse Alejandra. We remember and pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19, those in the various isolation wards. We pray for a cure and a vaccine to become readily available. And we pray for the elimination and containment of this COVID-19. We pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. For those persons who have lost employment, those who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We remember and pray for our security forces, for our government, for persons in positions of public trust and authority, for our churches and our church leadership, for persons in the private sector and all non-governmental organizations involved in any humanitarian effort and in the fight against COVID-19. We remember and pray for the members of the international community and all who presently suffer as a result of COVID-19. We continue to pray for protection from the ravages of natural disasters for ourselves and our region. And for the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercession by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining us for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and privilege to be able to begin each new day in the presence of God and in fellowship with you. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your continued support of the work of the Anglican Diocese of Phillies. I'd like to thank those who joined us for Bible study last evening with the bishop. It was indeed a blessed Bible study and I thank you so much for your participation as well. I remind you of our services for today. Today is Friday, and so following this broadcast, we have noonday devotions at midday, followed by children's Bible minutes at 2.30. And then we have dum, 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 stations of the cross at 6, followed by compline at 9. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you have the time or desire. And again, we thank you for your support of this ministry. We're going to conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication, <clears throat> pardon me, with our prayer of dedication followed by the grace and our closing hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn for this morning is supposed to be one that is based on Psalm 69. Yes, and I do hope you enjoyed it, sir. You know me, me and my chanting and my organ music. I do hope you enjoy it and I hope that it reminds you to be mindful of all of your thoughts, all of your words and all of your actions and that in all things, never be afraid to call upon God to guide you. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place. Same time. God bless. Bye for now.